everybody. I am Cinnamon Cooney, your art Sherpa, and today I'm going to show you how you can create this gorgeous robe wine glass with wine pouring in. It's a super fun action scene. I'm going to explain it step by step. I'm going to cover all the techniques. To help me do that is my husband, John. Hey, guys. He makes sure you never miss anything by zooming in so you can see what's happening and be really on the action. It really helps you do what you've got to do the best you can at home. This is a lot of fun to do. Now you could do just today's painting. That is completely okay. But I would like to point out that this is part of a 30 painting collection that you can do. So one and done is fun. All 30 is also fun. Either way, get your paint, get your brushes, come back and meet me these right now. I'm gonna show you how you can paint this pouring wine. Colors we have on today's palette are Cadmium Yellow Medium, Cad Red Medium, Naples Yellow Light, Panacridone Magenta, the Oxazine Purple, Thalo Blue, Thalo Green, Mars Black, and Titanium White. We're going to be doing this again on an 8x8 surface. Consistency is key. We're going to be painting this again on an 8x8 surface. And the first thing that I'm going to show you how to do is to get the colored ground on and to grid the image in. So let's just jump right on in and I'll show you how we're gonna do that. I'm gonna take my biggest brush, my number 30 bright. I'm gonna drag off the extra water and I'm gonna come over here and take my anacridone and my Naples yellow light. And I'm going to make a kind of, oh gosh, rose color. How nice for wine, right? And do this all over the whole canvas. All right. Whole canvas. So when you have your surface with a nice coat of this Naples Yellow Light Panacridone Magenta Mix, which I really like, it reminds me a little bit of kind of like roses and things, make sure that the surface isn't warm or anything because what we're gonna do is we're gonna grid this in. We're gonna be using a chalking tool and I'm gonna create a one inch by one inch grid on the surface of this canvas. And then I'm gonna use that grid to transfer my image on to the surface. When I've accomplished this one by one inch grid, I'm gonna number from one to eight on the top line and one to eight on the left side line. Now this is gonna help me identify where I'm at in the grid because to do the gridding method, what I'm essentially doing is instead of drawing the whole composition, I find a corresponding square and duplicate just what I see in that square. So an example of that is on row two, two, right? Right mm -hmm. here in this thing, both twos, I have a little kind of diagonal line that comes through the halfway point of the square to just above the halfway point. So all I'm doing, I'm not drawing the whole glass, just that. And then I might go from the two line down to the three, And I go through the whole image, just duplicating what I see. And then at the end, I will have my drawing, but I'm not having to take it in. So let's get that in now. All right, so that's all we have to do to complete step one. So you're already in the beginning of the painting doing great. Take a deep breath. And remember, if you have to change any lines, the chalk removes easily with just a damp brush and clean water. All right, I'm gonna see you back for step two. So in step two, I'm going to start putting in our background and creating kind of the nice diffused soft background that we're going to be having here. And it's going to be varying tones of what we've already put in working into a little bit of purple. And to get that in, I think I'm going to begin with my number eight cat's tongue. You could use a round or a filbert or a bright, just whatever brush you were super confident with. And I'm going to come here and start with my dark value. And to begin with my deep value, I'm going to take a little of my docks purple into my quinacridone and just a titch of my yellow, kind of softening it. Bring this up contour sketching around our glass and just keep working a little bit more magenta and Naples yellow light. 
And what's nice about the Naples Yellow Light is it creates a neutral effect and neutralizes the purple. That puts on opposite ends of the color wheel. And you can paint around the sides. You can do that in a very tidy way or a very loose way. As I come forward, I'm going to keep getting in my quinacridone magenta and adding some of my Naples yellow. I just keep going forward. Now, this is all blending what's called wet into wet. So the previous paint I put down is still wet, and the paint that I'm adding is wet, and so those two layers will meld together very nicely. Isn't that right, John? Yeah. It is a nice way to be able to blend in acrylic. This is a short time span. <laughs> uh, much like childhood, it's a short but delightful time span in which the paint easily will blend into the other paint and work that out. Now, mm. coming forward, I'm going to keep going into my magenta, but get a lot more of my Naples yellow. And I'll come around here and blend back. And let's make sure that those two seams, you can see that it's real easy for me to softly Go back and forth, blending this paint. While it's all still wet. After it dries, we would have to use a glazing method or a dry brush method to continue to blend it. Just blending this out. I'm going to put out a little more of my quinacridone magenta. Because I'm going through that very quickly, and sometimes you'll find certain paintings will use up more color than uh, other paintings will. Always you'll go through about twice the white, but sometimes even the colors will have more of a use than you might expect. Continuing to blend it over here. Adding more and more as I go out. Just trying to make sure that this is kind of light and chill. And what you may not know is that we're going to be going for kind of this little curved. I'm going to sort of sketch this since you understand. Where it's a little bit darker here in the background and a little bit curved as it, dark, as it lightens up. So that's what we're going for. And you can always come back and be like, no, no, it'll be darker down here. Just creating. A nice transition. Blendy, blendy, blend. The other thing is nice is to rinse out every once in a while so you're not carrying too much pigment into the areas that you're trying to blend. And again, you can paint around the sides. If you have sides to paint around. Because they might not, John. Mm -hmm. They might not have sides. I don't want to assume. But I do want to imagine. I'm imagining what you have. And I may paint out some of my chalk and have to put some of those lines back in. But I have a basic sense of the shape of everything. So it won't be such a struggle for me later. That's looking pretty good. And I may even come in and get a little bit of my titanium white and on into this mix. You can see I'm kind of lightening this value just a touch. And let's come here and sort of make sure that this is nice and bright. Soft, romantic kind of color scheme. Certain color schemes definitely have an emotional space to them. As I'm going to continue in, I'm going to definitely, definitely make sure that I've got some of my background color here in the center. So that when I put the dark values and the reflections and shadows on the glass, we're still seeing some of the background. If 
But I'm leaving a bit of line so I don't lose it. Can you see how even there I'm leaving a bit of my line? Mm -hmm. I know I've got to come back with dark values and light values and all kinds of things, but it's important to me to have this space in. Going a little bit, work that paint into my brush so it flows off nicely. And adjust values as needed. How are you feeling today, babe? Good. I wonder how you guys are doing at home. Are you taking care of yourself? Are you pacing yourself on this project? Or maybe you've just come and found this one video. <laughs> and been like, wait, there's a whole series? That's crazy. There's, That's there's one ahead of it and behind it. There's one the ahead series. of it and behind it. You could do if you wanted to. Mm -hmm. You could do them all. You could do one. As long as you're having fun, you're going to get something beneficial out of the experience, I think. Sometimes you can paint a little depth further into your chalk space that you know you're going to put back with darker values just so that you're like, okay, I know where I'm going. I know what I've got going on. This is, this is pretty okay. I may want to come back with just a little bit of my Quinn here and make sure that I rose this up a bit because I know I'm going to have such a deep purple red in the wine glass, I want there to be a bit of a, oh, a different sort of value set. Come in here and try to get that rosed up. I'll put my stem back in in a bit. Just trying to make sure we've got nice stuff around our wine glass. Oh, that was pretty. Sometimes you'll go and contour that, and you're like, oh, that's really pretty. And that's okay. You'll have those little moments in your piece, and you'll be like, yo, I'm loving it. All right. So that is step two. Step three, we're going to start putting in some of the broad strokes on the wine glass. I'll see you back for step three. So once we have this in, we can start refining the wine glass. And I'm going to use some interesting colors to do that. Let's move into our number four rounds. So we have a little bit more control. We can always get back into our cat's tongue, but I just want to start like kind of working that out. Now to sort of sketch the glass, I'm going to take a little bit of my halo blue, interestingly enough, and my dock's purple. And I'm going to come here very gently. Coming under the glass this is a very dark value. There's a cool thing will come with highlights later. And then let's kind of looking at that, I might give myself, whoops, got a little off center there. Sometimes you got to look at it a minute. And if you have to move anything back in, you can what? You always come back with a little bit of this kind of first color and trim that in. So you're not in any trouble no matter what you do. Let's gonna work that in there, make sure that those are nice. The other place I know we're going to see a bunch of sort of dark value is around the lip. This is the blue and the dioxazine. Now I'm gonna be putting some green in here, so I'm not gonna get too specific with the lip. I just wanted to know where it is mm. before I lose it. As I come up, I might move, I might add my brush into my Quinn, kind of keeping it a little more into the red, but less out of the blue. You can see it's a dark value, but it's different. Yeah. Because in glass, we don't paint see-through objects. We paint the light we see on the object. That's what we're actually painting. But you can see that gives us kind of like a little anchor, something a little thoughtful. I'm going to come and get a little bit of my green going on my wine bottle. 
I think it's going to be nice to take a little bit of this green and my phthalo blue, but much more to the green. I will do some nice broad strokes about this. Real easy for us to come back with shadows and highlights, but it's nice to get a depth of color there to work up from. Let's bring our neck off. Now, if you want, you could carry this around the side of the piece if that was important to you. You could do it in a very meticulous way or a very loose way. Grabbing some more green. This isn't our darkest or our lightest value on the stem at all. We're doing a process called blocking in. Blocking in is super useful because it allows us to, you know, get into some kind of like structures and sort of create placeholders for us mentally and emotionally throughout the painting because we all need a be in our painting. And then it, when we come back, we can be like, oh, I'm going to refine here. I'm going to refine here. I'm going to refine here. And through those refi refinements, paintings will start to happen. Gotcha. And the first part of those refinements is I do like me some quinacridone magenta and some dioxazine red. All right, those are a really good color. And I will add into that a bit of the purple to create the, that depth plum of my wine. Yeah. Because your wine has a depthy plum. We'll just start out at first just giving ourselves this value to work from. Okay. We're going to build highlights. We're going to do all kinds of fun, super fun things. And I'm going to come to the side. And then I'm going to do an interesting thing. I'm going to come up, down, up, making that little splash zone. Mm. Splash zone. Just fill that all in, but not that. It's looking pretty okay. We're not unhappy with that, are we? Mm -mm. Paint is being applied. Oh, it's too watery. I'll pick up that extra water, but you can see it's toning it, so that's really all I need. And it's okay if you go over that part of your stem, because we have so much to do to put it back, it won't harm it at all. This is really just about finding the big forms and the big shapes and starting to get them in. I'm also going to put a little bit of, I think I'm going to go back into my like first value color that I had and come right here make sure that I've got this that is my quinacridone and my Naples yellow light again oh I sorry I was I thought you were someplace else that's okay so I'm there. down here just adding a bit of a highlight I know I'm going to need it later and so it's just nice to put back in and then let's get into our blue and purple and just be sure that we're Lots of highlights and things that'll happen later, but this is just nice to have happen right now. And bring that in a little bit, kind of blending that in, wet into wet. See how I did that? Yeah. Creating a deeper value. That's nice. All right. 
So this is a really good place to be for step three because this lets us get in major contour structures, deep values. We're starting to see the essence, the the taste of the painting that we're doing. Mm -hmm. It's the beginning. There's a lot of seasoning. There's a lot more layers to put in. We got a lot more elements to include, but this is a great start. So let's give that a try and I'll meet you back for step four. One, two, three. Yeah, four. <laughs> is that correct? Yep. Okay. I didn't get the affirmation. I need affirmations. <laughs> Do you need affirmations? You're doing a good job. I too need affirmations. All right, I'll see you back for step four. <laughs> So now we're on to step four, and I think something that might be fun is for us to sort of really refine this wonderful, interesting wine spot coming in off the picture plane. It's always fun when an image comes off the picture plane because it kind of implies that there's a whole world we don't see, but we've just been invited into this view of it, and that's really fun. So we're gonna lean into that, and to do that, I'm gonna take some of my green, and I'm gonna grab a titch of my cadmium yellow, and you're gonna see that that kind of brightens my green a lot. And we like that brighter green. And I'm gonna come here into the stem and I'm going to make a nice, strong, brighter green line right here to the edge of the head of the stem. Come in here a little bit more. Bring that back. Right, there's a bit of a end there. And then let's go up a bit and then back because there's, you know, wine and stuff pouring out of it, so that would impact us. The another nice place that we can start putting this slightly lighter value is on that inside edge right there. Put a little bit right here, right there at the top. I will come back in with a lot more yellow, maybe a smidge of white. And add that nice little value to what I've got going on. So nice little reflection starting to glow. And it's important that things kind of get glowing in there. Mm -hmm. Now I'm gonna take just my green and I'm gonna come over what I've already painted and really pull together. Maybe add that little bit of a lip there. No, I don't want that lip. Here's how you erase if you don't like something. Never leave the, never leave the grid. <laughs> but that's all I got to do. If the layer underneath is dry and the paint is still wet, I can always very easily change my mind about anything. And that's important to know that you can do that. I feel like that still needs to be lighter right there. So let's get some yellow into my green and there we go. Doing good. We just need those little pops. I'm going to put one right here. A little more in there. This is just a little more of that yellow. Kind of like refining that, that feeling a bit. It's those glows in the glass that let us know what we're dealing with is green glass. Because sometimes green glass doesn't always register, a little bit of yellow, but not much, as green glass. It almost looks black to the eye. And it's playing with those optical effects that help us create those colored glass looks. Refining that edge right there. But down deep, interestingly enough, it's very dark. It's very dark. And guess what color I have to put out again? What did I tell you that I was gonna need a lot extra of? Magenta. It's a very magenta painting. There's a lot of magenta in the painting. And interestingly enough, we're going to take a bit of magenta into this green. It makes a very unique to phthalo green and quinacridone magenta color. Mm -hmm. I'm going to roll my brush a bit. Let's definitely add a dark line coming behind this. And around the side, continue to work these 
fabulous values, maybe down the front a bit. Looking pretty okay. I might pull this into that little shadow just a touch so it feels it has like continuity and it's just been caught by a shadow here. Yeah, I'm wiggling the brush to soften those edges. Mm -hmm. Not getting too fussy with it. I am supposed to be kind of working this in a very immediate, kind of fresh way. So I don't want to get too crazy. Let's take a tiny amount of white into the phthalo blue. We don't want to over lighten it or this next effect won't work well. And I'm going to bring that there. And you can kind of barely see that blue, but that blue is very important to how the handle glows and kind of some of the effects that you're going to see on it. I'm going to bring some up here. Just a smidge, and I mean a smidge more, more white. These are, these are small value changes. There we go. Another little reflection, kind of just subtly. I'm going to come on the inside here. A little bit of that. Just refining it. And back into the quinacridone phthalo green crazy mix that nobody ever sees coming. Hmm. Around a dark line around that outside edge. There we go. Now the glass will finish looking like glass when we put in the very last highlights, but that's just really what we've got to do to begin that um, glass effect. And then at the end, we're going to come back with our final brightest white highlights and hit everything. And all of a sudden it's going to be like glass and water and all the atmospheric things. And you're going to be like, this is like magic. And I'm going to be like, I know it's so much fun. All right. I'm going to see you back for step five. So on five, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about the wine in the glass a little bit. We're going to be doing all the little value changes, leaving those white reflections until last. Mm. I'm going to keep on with my round brush just because it's nice for curvilinear lines and it kind of gives me some cool effects there and I want to play with those. Now, I do want to take my quinacridone magenta over into my cad red because it gives me a very specific color that I think is unique to the mixture of these two that I lack very much. And I'm going to come out and add little bits of those highlights, those brighter values of red, using my reference, right? You use the reference as your guide about where they're going to go. It doesn't hurt either to sometimes look at pictures of things that you're painting. So if you wanted to look at a picture of, say, wine pouring out of a glass and how that lights and where it reflects, you might find that that's super helpful in what you're trying to do. Can I ask a question that I've seen come up here? Before? You can ask any question that you want, sir. So I've seen it come up that it says that it is artistically frowned upon to use a reference image <laughs> that you should paint from memory or only from a real observation. That is, well, it's not bad to practice to work from memory, and it's certainly not bad to paint from life. I recommend both of those things deeply. Um, you really can't paint what you can't see. And when you're trying to learn skills, don't add, hey, what's all the things I can visually remember perfectly and hey, I got to go set up outside as your first thing. Learn the skills and the skills are learned by looking at something and duplicating it, looking at something and mm. duplicating it. If you go to the wonderful fine European art schools, they drag your little tukas into the museum and make you look at the masters and duplicate the masters because the masters mastered it. That's why we call them that. Yeah. And that's why we look at them and then we go, how did you do that? And then you duplicate it. And then from there you go, you know, I could take this idea and expand on it, and then it becomes kind of your own jam. That's mm. what you're doing here. You're learning. So there's absolutely uh, frowned on, I don't know, 
I mean, I'm sure somebody's got an opinion somewhere. <laughs> gotcha. But nothing to <laughs> like worry to about share here. With everyone about what they think is or isn't art, as they always do. I'm going to add a little bit of this kind of lighter value here at the curve. Where the lighter values are is where the light is managing to get through the deep value that is the wine. I'm going to take some here and I'm going to come here and I'm going to kind of curve it around a bit. A little bit there. Maybe some there. It's just nice to, to play with it uh, some and let's add a little of this perhaps down here. It's always great in the glass to carry colors that you have through it other places. So you get the uh, the reflections that are sort of carried through. Because they'd be there. Yeah. I'm going to bring this almost to the edge here because we're going to play with some ideas and concepts in a minute that are fun. Pretty good. So we have kind of a mid-tone. I would say that's a mid-red. Yeah. But we've got to add some deep value. Easiest way to add deep value is the purple and the magenta. You can always get a little cat red into it to wind it up. Let's come here and find some of these. So let's, I'm going to take a line there and let's wiggle that in. Water does its thing. Wine does its thing. Paint no wine before it's time. Oh, I made a wine joke, John. I don't know is if it, I made a good one. Is that a wine joke? I don't know. Uh, I mean, I feel like it was a wine joke, but maybe I'm wrong. I'm going to pull some low dark value here. I'm not much of a whiner. Can't say that I agree with that. <laughs> And around you when you're sick. <laughs> hey, <laughs> holds aside. Uh, we're boo boos. You're really weird because you're like really, really fragile about like a little boo boo, but like a massive injury. You're like, it's cool, it's cool, I'm good, it's cool. And you're like, I think your arm's not attached anymore. We should go to see the doctor. Oh, no, it's just a scratch. You have like the Monty Python rules of injury. Finding little spots to kind of retain my highlights. Adding some of these deeper values, always fun. And come down to the bottom and really get into it. Because it's super, right? Super duper deep down I'll, here. It really is. And that's fun for me. So yep. Hopefully it's fun for you, but it's definitely fun for me. Bring that in. I'm just looking for those little places where nice little deep value in there. We're just finding the deep shadows, the deep deeps, deep deep deep. These red wines have a lot of range of color in them. They really do. I think that's why artists like painting them. I mean, I think initially it just the wine trend started because people had wine cellars and the paintings were selling and artists like to make money. Mm -hmm. They're very attached to eating and buying more art supplies. So sometimes they'll get into a whole art movement. Let's be honest, on a commercial, <laughs> you know, reason. But that doesn't make the artwork any less wonderful or valid. It just means that they might have been motivated. I liking to pay their bills. I like to pay my bills. I think that's a universal truth. I mean, paying just, bills is a good thing. Some of us feel like it is. I feel like there's many people who feel like it is. I'm gonna bring a little lighter value here as I'm looking at it, kind of into it. You see how I just brought? It's a subtle thing, but I'm. I do. Adding a little of that. It's looking good. Very. It's okay. It's all right. Let's take a little of our. Purple into our quinacridone, and I'm going to get some white into it. Makes that kind of plummy color. Let's see, I'm kind of working that back in and I wiggle the brush where I don't want to have an obvious line. Don't have a lot more of the plum anywhere else, I would say, on the surface, pretty much in this space.
playing with those values, right? Mm -hmm. That's what we do. What we do, we play with the values. We work it out. I see the shading happening right now on the water splash going up. Mm -hmm. Fun times. Playing with it. Now, I think this is a good place to kind of have a rest for step five because this is a lot to process. I really want you to look at it. I want you to like pay attention to where the shadows are, where the midtones and the slightly lighter than midtones are and get those as close as you can. We'll come back in step six and add our brighter reds, not everything but the white. We're gonna add all the final brighter tones, everything but the white. So I'll come back and meet you for step six. Well, I'm really hoping that these breakdowns are helping. In step six, we're going to add some of the gemmier red tones that are like the deep, bright reflections through the, through the wine. They're a lot of fun to do, I feel. I think you're going to enjoy them. And they're really going to involve coming into our cadmium red and a little bit of our cadmium yellow. All right? So we're going to get in there. They're just a bit warmer than everything that's around them. Come in here and we're going to add some of these. So let's come a few places and add these values. I find it's just kind of like little windows. You can kind of see those in there. Cat is such a bright color. Mm hmm that it really pops on a thing it creates that glow adding little bits of refraction down here maybe some little spots that's always fun there is weirdly a bit here on kind of almost the outside of the glass we'll have to really kind of work that you know, in some ways, maybe with some uh, white as well. Looking pretty nice. Mm -hmm. Again, we like to move these things around. Let's put a little bit of that here and just summon the stem. You don't want to get crazy. Don't get crazy with it. I know it's tempting. Try not to get crazy with it because it's, it's important, you know, to keep it kind of mellow. Mm -hmm. All right, I've got a little of my magenta here, and I'm going to get some of my white into this, and you're going to see it makes just kind of a bright pink. And if you get a little of your yellow into it, it really warms it. It's a very distinctive color. And come here into that part of the peach. Just adding a bit of that where this light is happening here. So it's really sort of picked up. And interestingly enough, get a little bit of your blue. Come along here, just a hint. Just a couple of places. Look at that. It's really pretty. In the wine. In the wine. <laughs> that's quite nice. Wow. That just really comes together. It just does. It's just so nice. It's just a little lovely as it comes together. And that's really kind of where we're at on the wine. And then when we get the wine in, we have to start resolving the glass. And I think I want to keep this as its own kind of like step and then come back and resolve the glass. So let's come back at step seven mm -hmm. and heavenly resolve our glass. I'll see you for step seven.
Step seven is where we put in the shadows and some of the midtone reflections on the glass. We are reserving the white highlights for last. Let's get some of that in. And I think I want to move to a bright brush. This is a number six bright. I'm going to go ahead and get it dipped in water. And I'm going to come in and start painting some of those reflections. Now, one of the nice things is, and I'll start with just a smidge of purple in my quinacridone, is these are naturally transparent. What do you mean? So the pigment isn't very opaque, and when I just paint it in a thin coat, it does a glaze. Hmm. So it's allowing what's underneath to show through, and I can create kind of little effects like that, dip a little bit of water. And I'm not sorry for it. I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> I'm going to come here and create like another one. With just my quinacridone. Quinacridone pigment PR. Let's see. What is it? Pigment red 122. Doesn't really matter what the tube says. When you see a uh, pigment red 122 somewhere on the tube, you got the right color. It's one of my very favorite colors. Actually, I really like anything in the Quinn family, John. I do too. I think Quinn's are kind of a pretty color. They're just kind of terrific, aren't they? Come on the outside here. You know, they can only be gotten from the flowers of Quinacridonia. <laughs> <laughs> Looking at that, though, I see something that I want to do. I want to create a lighter value on the outside of the glass. So if ever you're working and you see something like this where the values are too close, and you want to create a better uh, kind of zone between the two, do that. Look what we did. You might not know that's a thing that you could do. That's a thing that you can do. Mm. You're like, oh! And then I just feather it out to kind of blend it. It's about being able to get pretty close to what your background color was and just realizing it might need to be a little bit lighter than it is. The other place that this great color kind of goes around is around the edge of the glass. Mm, to make right that little up. lip. Yeah, because it's really reflected in the lip. So I need to put it there if I want it to be there later. And you can see I'm just creating these nice little... It's all right to pull that down from that far side. But it's not uh, on the far side that much. Add a little bit there. So that's doing pretty good. We can come out a bit and just brush it a little bit. See how I'm doing? Mm -hmm. Just a few little brushes. And then interestingly enough, let's get into the doxazine. And I'll mix it with the Quinn. I want a purple, but I need a transparent purple as I'm moving here. There we go. Mm -hmm. Nice dark value on that far side of the glass. And it's okay to carry it from the top down. See what I'm doing? Yeah. So it's on both sides. A little bit. There we go. Looking good, looking good in the neighborhood. All right. Now we're going to do a little of our white. It's going to be a bit of a dry brush here, guys. I'm going to come here from the edge. I've got my brush squared in. Light pressure. I'm going to bring that down. Doing pretty good. This is nice. Now I'm going to come back with my number four round. Little purple, little Quinn. You just kind of want the colors that you see all in the glass. I got blue, purple, Quinn. I'm just going to come in here and just make sure that this is a nice little kind of line because I'll be putting a little bit of a reflection in between this line, right? Mm -hmm. Interestingly enough, not just white, but some of the background color. There we go. Looking good in the neighborhood. 
Now give that a quick dry and I'll show you the trick. You just don't want the blue coming up because you want that initial background color that you had, which is your Naples yellow light, right? Mm -hmm. a little gummy there. Sometimes when your paint's been out and it's dry conditions, it will get quite dry itself. So it can be nice to make sure that you don't let it. When it's like this, it's most likely to crawl up the brush on you. I'm going to come in here in a couple places. I'm going to put this color in the middle of the blue. Hmm. Prove the bl the blend, the flow. The paint must flow. This is different than the white reflections we will be doing. This is just about how, you know, glass is. Mm -hmm. Glass is like this. Captures those reflections. It really does. I'm going to put a little bit there. Just adding those different little hues and values. The other place that we're going to take this nice little pink thing is we're going to come under here and kind of try to confidently come up this outer edge. There we go. A little bit of that. So you can kind of see that gives us a value. It's not that much, but it makes a huge difference. I really like to do this. Now, the last bit, this is like the frosting that we're about to do, which is the mm. white highlights. So we're going to come back and I'm going to show you all the places to put bright white paint that's reflecting. That's going to make the, the water seem wet, the glass seem transparent and reflective, and everything seem three-dimensional. Step eight is the frosting. So we're back, we're gonna hit those white reflections, but to do that, we need to improve the flow of the white paint. So I'm gonna take my number four round and make sure it's very clean and using clean water, I'm gonna come here and kind of thin some of my titanium white. I've got fans running today, so the paint is really skinned, which is what you see me moving over. And that can happen in your paint where the top of it is sort of dry, but underneath of it is still wet. And so you can still use it as long as you get underneath the skin. It reminds me of like oatmeal or something. <laughs> So I'm just pulling out the extra paint. You can see I've thinned it with water. And I'm gonna come through and I'm gonna add a few interesting little reflections. So let's put a little reflection right here on the inside of that wine. Right there. Well, as you can see, suddenly you have a very nice shiny dark glass. <laughs> just wine glass. Mm -hmm. It's kind of terrific, right? Let's add a hot reflection right here. And one right here. <laughs> Ooh, doo -doo. All right, so one is coming out. Right there. There. Just little bits of a wine reflection. Oh, look at that. So all those are where the wine is just really refracting white back at us. And I can come here and even add a little bit on the glass. How's that? It just gets better and better, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Right along there. right up there so awesome coming up there some nice wine reflections and you can really see it i feel oh i can i feel you can you can always add some little bubble churning in the wine
I'm just looking for all those little places that the wine would have one of those reflections. There's definitely going to be one down here. Mm -hmm. And a bit up the side. Kind of the inside of the glass where the, the wine is sort of inside of it. <sighs> and then maybe one right here in that stem. So it's wow. a very, it's a delicate touch, right? Mm -hmm. You don't want to overdo. It can be nice to add some of these little wiggles in the wine that's coming up. Because where it's swirling, it's going to have the most surfaces engaged to a reflection. So that's where you put the most. Less is more though. So let's pull this out and go ahead and give our signature. Mm. Yeah, that's where we are. Just cruise right along. We did. I'm going to grab a little bit of a pink mixed into my thinned white and come over here and put a little signature. You don't always have to sign in the right corner. You can sign all kinds of creative places. Just whatever you do, realize that it's part of the composition. Part of what you've done. You painted a water wine pouring in glasses and transparent things and you totally did that today and I think that's super exciting. I always love teaching students this particular type of technique because it's a really friendly way to introduce them to the ideas of how we paint see-through things like water. Wine is just a lot of fun to paint. It's really enjoyable. The colors are great. They're really rich and I hope you enjoyed every part of creating yours for yourself at home. As I said earlier, it's totally fine to just do this one lesson, but if you'd like to come back tomorrow, we're going to be painting this nest with robin blue eggs. Be good to yourself, be good to each other, and I want to see you at an easel really soon. Bye-bye!